So we saw that all we need to calculate things like S matrix elements is the endpoint correlation function. This was defined in the context of uh, canonical quantizations as we have field operators as well as uh, quantum state for the field. Now the question is, how does it work in the many path approach? If you remember, we already saw a connection between uh, expressions in the canonical quantization framework and in the many path quantization framework. And that was when we defined the quantity Z uh, for source J. This quantity gives us the amplitude of probability to go from vacuum to vacuum over an infinite time. And we uh, formally express that in the canonical quantization framework because we have here an operator and here states. Uh, but we essentially um, uh, worked with uh, this quantity in the uh, many path approach where we had a, a path integral over all the possible paths connecting the vacuum to vacuum over an infinite time. Uh, and what we were summing was exponential of i times the action. So we can similarly connect the endpoint correlation function uh, in the many path approach. So we are summing over the path. We have uh, the phase exponential i times the action. Now we don't have the source because there is no source in the expression for the endpoint correlation function. The endpoint correlation function involves some fields operator expressed as some a point of space time, but now in the many path approach, these operators become just uh, simple classical uh, fields, uh, phi of x1, phi of xn, etc. And because these are classical fields, they obviously commute, so we don't need uh, the time ordering operators anymore because it doesn't matter which one comes first in time. And finally, we introduce a normalization factor n, which we can uh, fixed by requiring, for instance, that the state, uh, the vacuum state, are normalized. You may wonder what happened to the uh, evolution operator. In fact, it's hidden in the field operators themselves, which are written in the Heisenberg uh, representation. So we are still going from vacuum far in the past to vacuum far in the future. Uh, but just in between, we are acting with some field operators at some given times. And that's exactly what we are doing on the right hand side. We evolve from vacuum to vacuum over an infinite time um, with a corresponding phase. And at different points of space time, we have an action of the fields, which are not classical fields. So this expression is really similar to this one except that now we don't have any source and we have added some uh, field operator at different point of space time so the question of course is how do we deal with this type of uh, path integrals uh, when we have some phi's in front of the exponential i times the action um, we have spent so much time uh, trying to solve or approximate the function z that you don't want to uh, do that all over again for this new quantity. Uh, luckily, there is a relatively straightforward way to get um, this quantity starting from uh, Z, and uh, that involves uh, functional derivatives. So let's try to calculate the functional derivative of Z with respect to the source J evaluated at some point of space time X. The functional derivative acts on the exponential in the same way um, that the normal derivative, and we get note that when we write the derivative of the exponent, uh, we change a variable from y to z because these are dummy variables and they should be uh, different. The derivative with respect to j for the first term l will give us zero because there is no j um, and will give us a delta function for the second term according to the basic axiom we use to define the functional derivatives.
So we see that if we take uh, j to be zero and up to an i factor and a normalization, we recognize the one-point correlation function with only one field um, in the path integral. So if we take an, another functional derivative of this expression, uh, that will bring down another field, phi. So with a delta uh, j of y, we will have another, another phi of y in addition to the phi of x, and so on and so forth. So we can generalize uh, this expression to the case of endpoint correlation functions. So we see that by taking functional derivatives of z, we can get any endpoint correlation function, and therefore, uh, which we can use to calculate any uh, S matrix element. So that uh, emphasizes the fact that z is really an important quantity from which we can extract really all the physics we want. And in particular, this is why it is called a generating functional because this is used to compute any endpoint correlation function. For instance, you can use this expression with only two fields and therefore a second order functional derivative of z in order to recover uh, the free propagators, for instance, the Klein-Gordon uh, propagator, if you start from the Klein-Gordon Lagrangian. Uh, 